But what I came to discuss was something that was in the news that shocked me. Uh, but it shouldn't have shocked me, but it shocked me. And that was the issue that uh, arose uh, in Egypt recently about uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's Black Cleopatra film. And I wanted to talk about the Arab-Egyptian outcry, fact and fiction. That's what I wanted to talk about because I think it's amazing. And, I, and let me just tell you, uh, as I've said to people before, um, I, I've written 100 books on African history and culture. And two of the books I've written uh, speak to this. One is the history of Africa, and the other one is uh, custom and culture of Egypt. And the custom and culture of Egypt, I, I wrote that maybe 15, 20 years ago. But uh, that book, in addition to other books, have raised this question, and, and I, I want to make some other caveats. Uh, uh, I, I was quoted recently in the press of saying that, well, uh, Cleopatra did not matter much. And, and I still stick by that. I mean, Cleopatra was not one of the great queens of, of Egypt. There's no question about that. She was not a great queen. Most of her time was spent chasing Mark Anthony uh, of Rome. So th that's, not a, that was, that's not a contribution. It's not like what Hatshepsut did. You see what I'm saying? She didn't build no great uh, 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 temples and, and, and tombs and statues. And we don't have that result from Cleopatra. Maybe one thing from her, you see. And, and most of it is underwater. So we don't have a major, there's, not a, there's no major uh, achievement that Cleopatra uh, did. So, and I have said that in the past. I stick by that. She's not the greatest of the, of the African queens or, or, or leaders. And so that's one thing. The second thing I want to say is that um, I trace my ancestry through DNA uh, on my mother's side to Sudan. So I'm always interested in anything that happens in Egypt and anything that happens in Sudan. That's very close to me. And so uh, I took an interest in this particular issue. And I took an interest in this particular issue because I wanted to try to set the record straight as, as much as I could by starting where we ought to start and where Sheikh Anta Jope started. Ancient Egypt was a black civilization, full stop. No argument. Ancient Egypt was a black civilization. Just like we can say ancient Nubia and ancient Kush were black civilization, full stop. That didn't mean there were no invasions from outside. That did not mean that there were not people who came from Asia, Southwest Asia, the Hyksos. That did not mean that the Assyrians and the Persians didn't from time to time come into Egypt. That didn't mean that the Greeks didn't come. It didn't mean that the Romans didn't come. It didn't mean that the Arabs are not there now. It didn't mean that the English didn't come and the French didn't come. You see, they all came because it was the place that you went to when you wanted knowledge and information. The attraction of Kemet, the land of black people. That was the, that was the attraction of the knowledge of Kemet. So don't, if you, you get in a discussion with somebody, you tell them ancient Egypt was a black civilization. Now, one thing, fortunately for me, I, I've been to Egypt at least 10 times. And I've taken hundreds of people to Egypt. And not only have I taken people to Egypt, but we have met in Egypt the African people who are still surviving. They're not thriving as they ought to because of the racism often found in that country. But they are surviving. And they're still there.
even though there is a push to keep them down. That's happening right now. I was last there in 2019. I, I know Kemet. And I know the current situation in the country. And so that's why when I heard that Jada Pinkett Smith had claimed, as she had done and did it very well, uh, that she was going to do a black Cleopatra. And then there was an outcry. I asked myself, who would, who would cry? Who would be outraged at this? Who would see this as a problem? Why would this be even contested? And that's why I said, first of all, the people who would contest it, they, they don't know anything about the peopling of Egypt, number one. Even the people there, you know, sometimes people can live in a society and don't know who, who, who are the people, who were the people. If I were to ask you right now in Philadelphia, if I were to ask people in Philadelphia, who were the people here, the indigenous people here 500 years ago? Most people, most people wouldn't know the letter P. They never heard of the letter P. They, they think they've been here, or their people came from here. You know what I mean? They think, oh, we've been here so long, our people must have been here forever. Or they say, oh, no, if we were not here, then the Europeans were here. Wait a minute. The little people were here. So you got to acknowledge land. And so you do land acknowledgement. That's the first order of integrity, the first order of humility of any people who are, who, is, who are existing in some other land is the first order is land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the little people. Now you can also acknowledge labor. But the African people came here and labor and made this country, built it. You see, you can do that. But you got to have land acknowledgement and the outcry against Jada Pinkett Smith's uh, Cleopatra is that the people don't want to do land acknowledgement. That's the first thing they don't want to do. They don't want to acknowledge that Egypt in ancient time was a black country. Sheikh Hunter Joe said that and he proved it over and over again. In 1973, UNESCO had a conference in Cairo and they invited over 70 people intellectual scholars who studied Egypt to come to Cairo and to discuss the peopling of ancient Egypt. When they left that conference, it was pretty clear to everybody that the work that was done by Sheikh Hunter Jope and his mentee, Theophil Obinga at that time, had conclusively proved that the ancient Egyptians were black people. So, so now why we come in 2023 we still having an outcry about Egypt. Well, somebody said, well, no, but the outcry is not about Egypt. It's really now about Cleopatra. So we'll, we're going to get to Cleopatra in a minute. Uh, but the UNESCO conference is very important. And it's very important for people who are listening wherever you are in the world. Go get the book, The African Origin of Civilization. You need that book just to have as a resource to refer to whenever you have a question about ancient African civilization. And of course, you can, you, 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 you have my name, you, Maleficete Asante, you can look up any of my books and it will be very helpful for you. The second thing I want to say, and I have pictures here of Sheikh Anta Jope and Teofilo Benga. Sheikh Anta Jope is on the top. He was a Senegalese scholar and Teofilo Benga is a Congolese scholar at the bottom of this picture. Now, the representation, representations of ancient Egypt are very interesting because uh, the further you go back, the further you go back in time, the blacker the population of Egypt. So sometimes people go to Egypt right now, today, and they come back, and people have gone with me, and they come back, you know, there's so many people who are light complexion. Where do these light complexion people come from if you say it was a black civilization? Well, it's come through invasion. It come through history. The, the, I mean, many of the con con current 
people in Egypt are uh, of Arab background. Many of them uh, have Persian background in them. Many people have Greek background. That, that's true. But the base of the, of the population was black. It was a black African population. And Sheikh Anta used to like to use the word black African. Uh, and I, I used to say, I said to him, well, why not just African? He said, no, I, it, you have to make the point because otherwise people can get confused. If you say it was African population, it said, it said black African. Stanfield Obinga says the same thing, black African. And you have to say that because if you don't say that, then people think, well, maybe there's some other kind of Africans. He says, no. That's why he called Negro African. This is black, these are black people, just like the Senegalese. That's who they were. Just like the people in Niger, just like the people in Darfur. That's who they were, you see? So now, when you get that information, then you start, have to say, well, the population change. Yeah, populations change. They always, they change a lot. The people in Mexico are not the same people that were there a thousand years ago. The, the, the people in Canada are not the people who were there 500 years ago. Populations change like that. And that's possible, it's possible to see that. And that's why you need to understand that uh, reality. And uh, you know, I was in a museum, in the Cairo Museum, the old museum. They got a new one now. The old museum in Cairo. And uh, someone saw this statue on, the right, uh, on, the le on uh, your left of uh, an Amun, uh, uh, King Tadagamun. And they said, why is he black? Well, uh, as some, the guy explained, because he was black. What, 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 what are you talking about? Why is he black? But the, but, the, but the idea is that what we have is a racialized thinking about African people, that somehow African people cannot be uh, who they are. And this, is the, and this is the same issue in Sudan. I'm telling you, it's the same issue in Sudan. It is we don't want to give black people anything. And certainly we're not going to give them this. And so you go in and you take a civilization, you make the civilization yours, and you claim that the other people didn't exist. I mean, it's just like if we were to go to New Mexico or, or, um, or Arizona as, as African people and take over the Pueblos and claim after 100 years that no Native Americans ever lived here. This is our place. We created these Pueblos, you see? You see? So, 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 so African Americans and other people uh, who have made thousands of trips, if you take all the people who've gone, and, 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 and who knows, maybe a million African Americans have been to Kemet, to Egypt. So we know the place. We, we know what we see when we go to the villages in Upper Egypt. We, we know the people we see. We, we have friends among them. I had a very good friend who passed away not long ago. His name was Hamdi. He lived on the island of Abu that they call Elephantine Island, you see. African man who was very clear about the history of Egypt and about Kemet. And there are African people throughout the continent, throughout the continent, but also th throughout that country, through that, that particular country. So then what, what is the issue? What is the, what, what is the reason for this outcry? The reason, the problem is the hatred of black people. I'm just going to be frank with you. I've never yet met a progressive Arab person who talks against the enslavement of black people. I'm sure there's some. I don't, I'm just saying that. I'm sure there's some, but I don't know them. And yet, in Mauritania, in Sudan, you have the enslavement of black people because they're black. 